a lot of times you might look and say, well, why do I actually love that? Like, why do I love my car? Why do I love my camera lens, my camera body, my wife, my husband, partner, whatever. And a lot of times you can't really put your finger on anything. And that's how I feel about the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. I love the lens, but I'm not exactly sure what it is about the lens that I like or love. So then I thought about it and I realized it's just that the lens works. It just always works the way it's supposed to all the time, no matter what conditions I put it in. So I figured I'll just put a few things together, make a short little video. Maybe this will help someone out explaining why I love the lens and why I think at the price it's at, which is where I'm going to start. It's a phenomenal deal in my opinion. This lens starts off at, at $2,000. If you're looking at it, you probably know. I think for that price, it's very, very fair deal. I actually think it's kind of a bargain to be quite honest with you. I know there are some other third party lenses out there. Those come in somewhere around the same uh, ballpark uh, in terms of pricing. I don't have any experience with those lenses onto the Sony bodies, but I'll tell you this, and I think most people know this and understand this, if you want optimal performance out of your camera and your lenses and your autofocus system, because let's face it, you have a lens like this probably for wildlife or for sports photography, you typically want to match up the camera body company and the lens. So you want to go Sony, Sony, Canon, Canon, whatever it might be. That's probably going to get you the best performance and the best results. So yeah, at the price this is at, you know, if you want to go for like a 600 millimeter F4, by all means, go ahead. I'd rather buy a car with that money. That's up to you. If you feel the value is there, that's obviously, uh, that's your opinion or whatever. It's a zoom lens. So it's a 200 to 600. You just have that additional variable length if you need it. Obviously a prime lens is gonna get you a little bit sharper focus. I'm sorry, a little bit sharper image most of the time. But yeah, I mean, if you're zooming in on these photos on a computer, yes, you're probably gonna notice a difference at like 100% or 200%. But I'm gonna be honest, in the real world, very, very few people are going to be able to distinguish, if anyone, the difference between a 200, 600 or like a 600 millimeter. And sure, the 600 millimeter or the 400 millimeter is probably a little bit better weather sealed or whatnot, but I've had this out in plenty of conditions where I feel comfortable having it out in any condition, if that makes sense. I think it does. The other thing that I love is that when you do zoom, it's an internal zoom. For instance, the lens I'm using right now is a 24 to 70. It's a zoom lens whenever I'm out vlogging or whatever. There's always like snow getting in there, rain getting in there, and you always kind of, well, I have it on the back of my mind where, you know, I'm like, oh, I gotta clean it off. I don't want water to get inside and whatnot. You don't have to worry about that with this lens. That's like, yeah, it's just great. So yeah, that's just another, I guess, added benefit of having this lens is the fact that it's all an internal zoom. You don't have to worry about any of the dust, any of the dirt, or water, or anything like that getting inside the lens. Okay, here's a big reason why I love this lens. So I'm a landscape and wildlife photographer. I do both of them. I don't think there's, I mean, there's people out there that do both, but I don't know if they both, <laughs> I don't know if they have a passion for both of them, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I absolutely love landscape photography. That's what I started off doing. And now I absolutely also love wildlife photography. So for me, when I go out on trips or when I'm going out hiking, I want to bring this lens and my landscape photography gear. So the fact that this is so compact and it fits in my backpack with my landscape photography lenses in there, camera, maybe a second body, stuff like that. That is huge for me. Uh, I'll put a link up here. I, I did a video with a Shimoda Action X50 bag and what I can fit in there. And I'll just kind of throw that up now while I'm talking as some B-roll and you can see that I can fit all of my gear in there. And that's just a huge, huge benefit. When I was looking at, I was actually looking at the Sony 600 millimeter uh, F4 and it's just big. It's just really big and I wouldn't be able to really fit in a lot of the other stuff that I'd want to take with me when I'm going out in the field. So that is a huge, huge thing with me. The fact that this can fit into my camera backpack with all of my other gear is huge. So that's just another reason why I love the 200-600.
So let's talk about the weight. This is a relatively heavy lens, but it's not heavy to the point where you can't walk around and just kind of hold it in your hand or use a strap with it. I think this weighs in at around four, four and a half pounds. The 600 millimeter, I think is around six, six and a half pounds, you know, somewhere around there. And that two pounds is gonna make a difference. Um, I typically just have it in my hand and hold it just like this when I'm out hiking or walking down trails looking for wildlife. My shoulder doesn't really get sore. Um, my, you know, I switch hands, obviously arms here and there, but it's doable, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Whereas, you know, if you have a bigger lens, like a 600 millimeter or even, I don't know what the 400 millimeter weighs. I'm gonna assume it's a little bit more than this. So you can get away carrying those. It's just gonna be a little bit harder over time. And so the fact that this is a little bit lighter, but I still have that 600 millimeter reach is just, yeah, it's just like a really good deal. So the autofocus with this, I guess even the sharpness too. There's a lot of videos on YouTube where you can watch and get into the technicals in terms of sharpness, autofocus, stuff like that. I use this Sony 200-600 on the a7 III. Now I have it on the a7 IV. The autofocus systems between the a7 III and a7 IV, are, it, it's light years apart. The a7 IV is so much faster and so much better. Coupled with this lens, it's a great user experience. You know, that's kind of what we pay for most of the time. A lot of people say, oh, I wanna pay for sharpness. That's fine if that's what you're looking for. Very few people are printing larger than 24 by 36. I mean, you know, unless you're Peter Lick or a few others, you're not really printing bigger than 24 by 36. And to be quite honest, that's why I'm not all that concerned with sharpness. I have a photo up in my living room that was shot with the Sony a7 III and this lens in Yosemite, no, not Yosemite, uh, Yellowstone National Park. That's heavily cropped in. I printed it 24 by 36 because I wanted to see if I can see any noticeable difference. I couldn't, and it was a cheap print. It's like a 45 or $50 print. I'm not gonna get caught up on how sharp it is, but for the price, for the lens and what you're getting, it's extremely sharp. Autofocus is extremely fast. It's really good. I never had any autofocus, eye autofocus issues with the Sony a7 IV. I did do the upgrade, so I'm on the latest version. I didn't notice any difference, but anyways, uh, this is more about the lens, not necessarily the camera. So yeah, the fact that the autofocus on this lens works awesome, it's fast. Honestly, I mean, you know, sometimes with birds, it, you're far away. Yeah, it might not catch like right, right away, or it might catch, but it's catching the body and not the eye. But usually I notice that happens like if there's a, uh, a piece of grass or something in between the camera lens and the bird. But if you're photographing like, like I photographed coyotes, if you're doing fox, bison, you know, larger mammals, things like that. I have never had an issue, even with the Sony a7 III, let alone the Sony a7 IV with this lens. So yeah, that's regarding the autofocus. And I think for the most part, I kind of covered what I wanted to touch on. And again, I'm making this video because I'm on the Sony uh, Facebook page, uh, the Sony Alpha Group and on Facebook and a couple other places. And I, I see a lot of people put up questions about this lens, like, hey, is it good? And I always try to comment back and I figured, let me just maybe put a little video together and you know, maybe it'll help a few people out. So if you're wondering, I've been using this lens for little over two years. Um, I bought it April, 2020. Right now it's June, 2022. I use it probably on average three or four days a week. And I've had no issues. Like I said, I've shot with it hot, cold, sunny, rainy, snow. You name it, it's been out there in the elements. I do typically have a raincoat camo sleeve that goes over this. I took that off because I'm cleaning the lens right now. And that's also why I figured, hey, let me make a little quick video. And with that, I really don't have any concerns with, you know, um, dust, dirt, really water is what I'm, is really the primary concern getting into a lens. But like I said, I haven't had any issues, so. Um, yeah, it's just been a phenomenal lens. It was worth every dollar that I paid for it. Literally, you know, I'm not just saying that $2,000 is a lot of money. We all know that. I mean, for the price, I really just don't think you can beat it to be quite honest with you. So that's it. That's my rant. If you have any questions, comments, definitely leave them down below. I will do my best to answer them and help you guys out. 
Uh, hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe, you know what to do. I appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video.